This is John Cola with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for him here in the garden of my friend, Dr. Jeff Pierce, who's been a medical doctor for almost 20 years now and also board certified in lifestyle medicine. And we're here in his garden where he grows tons of different fruits. He's got wine grapes of the green, purple. I had some red Indian peaches. He's got asparagus. He's got leafy greens. He's got rhubarb. He's got horseradish. He's got guavas I just ate. He's got all kinds of crazy stuff. He got some amazing figs. He grows a variety of foods and in this episode we're going to go ahead and interview Dr. Pierce to share some of his knowledge with you guys on why being healthy and lifestyle medicine is more than just the food. Food is only one component because you know it's a it's often thought of in raw foods. Hey if you just eat raw food diet, raw vegan, you're going to be healthy. But there's a, many other components if you guys really want to have your health that many raw food channels are not going to share with you guys. So let's hear from Dr. Jeff today. All right, so now I'm here with Dr. Jeff Pierce. And this is his day off today. He's just kind of more mellow, dude. <laughs> Family medicine doctor for nearly 20 years now and also um, board certified in lifestyle medicine. He gave me a little tour of his garden. If you want to see his garden in more detail, check the links down below for my YouTube gardening channel, Growing Your Greens. I have done videos at Jeff's amazing garden here where him and his family eats from every day um, in the past. But in this episode, what we want to talk about is lifestyle medicine, which is kind of a new branch of medicine that many of you guys may not be familiar with, right? And this is like if you want to be pre like preventative medicine, kind of is how I think about it. You want to do these things so you don't get sick, so that you don't need to go to Jeff when you get sick. <laughs> and of course, diet is one part, and I think in many cases on many YouTube channels, diet is overly emphasized to the detriment of some of the other components of lifestyle medicine that science has shown to be very critical for your overall long-term health. And that's what we're gonna learn from Dr. Jeff today. So Jeff, why did you get into lifestyle medicine after being a doctor for many years? Yeah, I, I felt like modern medicine does a great job with uh, certain things. Some infections, breaking your bone, having an appendicitis, modern medicine does a great job with that. But it's pretty well known that modern medicine is not doing a great job when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, chronic illnesses. So I'm thinking about high cholesterol, high blood pressure, uh, heart attacks, diabetes, uh, autoimmune conditions, etc. cetera. Uh, it, it turns out we end up, unfortunately, mostly prescribing pills and doing some procedures that just kind of maintain the illness. And, and it wasn't great for the patients and it wasn't rewarding for, uh, for the provider, for the doc. And so I stumbled upon lifestyle medicine and, and said, wait a second, there's like decades of research showing that if you eat certain way, if you move certain way, if you're getting sleep, et cetera, and we'll talk about all these in the different pillars of it in a sec. Um, if you do this, you can prevent the majority of these chronic illnesses. And what's even maybe more exciting even is that people with them uh, can uh, treat those illnesses and every once in a while the illnesses go completely away and it was is once I started practicing this way that I saw my first cases of diabetes reversal which I didn't even think was a thing uh, and didn't even hear about it in my training so it's an exciting type of medicine to practice and it's very rewarding for everyone involved wow yeah so like a recent question I got Dr. Jeff you know somebody asked me is like hey how can somebody who ate plant-based for all these years still get you know, breast cancer, some kind of cancer, right? So it's not just about the diet. There's so many other factors and all these other factors were not aligned with that person. Or maybe you're still dealing with some kind of health issues that lifestyle medicine may be able to help. You know, some, some things you do need to see a real doctor for, right? Um, but you should do these lifestyle medicine, um, you know, pillars for sure, just to rule them out, just to be a healthier human being in the long run. Yep. I I'd agree. I'd say that, you know, if you'd asked me when I was in my schooling what percentage of, uh, you know, cancer or illnesses, chronic illnesses were due to either genetics or just bad luck, I'd say probably most of them. But what we know now is uh, that genes and uh, probably play about 20% of the role in a, in a lot of conditions and maybe 60 to 80 or more percent, depending on the on the condition, is... is uh, 
is uh, in control of what you're, what you're doing is your habits. And so are they healthy habits or are they unhealthy habits? And um, the one that we, uh, probably is talked about a lot, like John's saying, is, is eating a healthy diet that's uh, predominantly or exclusively plants. But I I in addition, there, there are other parts to it. Cool. So let's learn about these parts, Dr. Jeff. What are the parts? And like, let's go from like the most important. So say somebody's got their diet down pat because you guys have been watching me for a while. But there's other things that I think are, you know, in, in, are in a range of like some are definitely more of a priority than others. And, but they're all important, of course. So let's go from the top of the list, like most priority. If somebody could only do one of them because they don't want to change things too rapidly or make a lot of changes in their lives or whatever <laughs> yeah that's a that's a that's a good one it's tough for me to rank them uh, we learn through uh, through the boarding process for uh, at the American College of Lifestyle Medicine that the six pillars are eating this healthy diet whole food plant-based as much as possible getting daily movement in um, is number two I'll list them all and then we'll and then we'll talk about them uh, one at a time uh, three is uh, getting restful restorative sleep Number four, uh, dealing with uh, stress, with the chronic stress that we all uh, live with in various degrees. Uh, number five is having a strong community um, and connectiveness. And number six is avoiding uh, or at least minimizing toxins uh, in the various forms that we're exposed to uh, day in and day out. And I think after diet, probably what I think of most commonly is, uh, is physical activity. And, and I think they choose those words wisely. They don't say exercise. They don't say, you know, marathon running or weightlifting. They just say movement, daily movement or physical activity. Um, and the point here is that, uh, you know, you don't have to put on spandex. You don't have to have a membership at a gym. Um, you just have to basically be not sitting all day. <laughs> And it sounds so simple and so silly, but we've become a society of sitters, and which is uh, you know 180 degrees from what we have developed as a species um, over the years. And um, nowadays we are indoors 90% of the time. We um, sit from our breakfast to our commute to our lunch and our and our commute back for dinner and Netflix to follow. Um, and so it's. Uh, we have to work now in our in our society, which has all sorts of wonderful things like elevators for people who need them and uh, walkways at the airport for if you're in a hurry or something. But we act actively have to seek out physical activity nowadays um, and schedule it in because it's very easy otherwise just to be in front of a screen or, or doing other things that don't involve it. So. Um, you know, studies show that even just not sitting is helpful standing in an Australian study uh, they showed was beneficial or, you know, we talk about wor uh, step counts and we're worried about, did I get my 10,000 steps in the day? Well, actually you see a big uh, improvement in, in health benefits, mortality benefits, just from going from 2,000 to 4,000 steps in a day. Um, and it doesn't take very much to, to get 4,000 steps in, in, a, in a day. So I would say, do something that you can do every day, 12 months out of the year, or most days. The official recommendation is 150 minutes of moderate uh, exercise to where, or moderate movement to where um, you're, you're working hard enough that you can still com uh, converse with someone that you're going for a walk with. That's moderate exercise. Um, but if you are uh, having to pause every couple of breath uh, after, after every couple of words that's a vigorous exercise all you need is about 75 minutes of that a week but 150 minutes of moderate uh, exercise in a week and then throw in a couple of days of uh, resistance training weight training of some sort that's that's probably the ideal but the good news is the more you know just a little bit of uh, exercise is beneficial or movement is beneficial and number two the more you can get the better for the most part, I wouldn't recommend running a 40 mile uh, ultra marathon every day, but I would say that, you know, if you can get 10,000, maybe next week go for 12,000 steps. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, a lot about um, daily movement. And for me, um, one of my, probably my main source of daily movement is being out in the garden. We, uh, we're certainly kept busy with, uh, you know, doing some weeding, doing some planting, doing some harvesting, and that's something that needs to get done whether I'm in a good mood or whether there's uh, rain outside or not, you know, so it's one of those things that nudges me into moving every day. Mm. Yeah, I mean, same with me, I'm gardening like every day pretty much out in the garden, pulling weeds, harvesting, you know, I'm outside, I have a standing kind of like kitchen area in my backyard, so I'm like preparing food out there. I go in and work on the computer, standing desk, mm. <laughs> and so I'm moving all day. I walk to the store, when I go shopping, I, sh I shop at like six different stores, 
So I park and walk to each around the store, produce section usually, and then carry my stuff. I don't get shopping carts, so I get resistance exercise as I'm carrying, you know, 40 pounds of produce out because I just got a deal on something. <laughs> Hickama lately is what I've been buying in bulk. And just getting real word exercise. You know, I go on a bike ride and I love hiking out in nature. And you know, hey, when you guys park at a parking lot, right? Park far away so your car don't get door dings. And then you get the enjoyment of walking up some extra steps, right? When you go to the hotel or there's stairs and you have the option to do it, some hotels force you to take the elevator, which I hate. Take the stairs, especially carrying your bags, resistance training upstairs. It's always good fun. That's how I have fun when I'm on vacation and pushing heavy carts. If you guys saw my Instagram post recently, I like carry all these cooler bags and my juicer and blender and even a steamer on this last trip. I was gone for over a week. Even a refrigerator, plug-in refrigerator I could use in the car or at the hotel. Keep my food cold, pushing on a cart. That's just too much to carry in one load. So get your daily moving in. So you're not sitting on your butt all day. <laughs> all right, Dr. Jeff, so let's, let's talk about sleep because sleep I think is an easy one that you know exercise or movement takes some effort. Mm -hmm. But sleep is you just need to sleep more and get proper sleep. So let's talk about how somebody could hopefully get better sleep and then in turn get better health. I totally agree. I mean, sleep is free. Uh, and uh, it's a lot less expensive than uh, buying uh, organic, for example. And so that's one of the benefits. I'd say you, ev everyone watching this has probably either said or heard at some point, oh, don't worry, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And it turns out that if you follow that mantra um, of not prioritizing, prioritizing sleep, you, you might get to uh, you know, practice that uh, after death sooner than, you, than you'd want. And so um, sleep is incredibly important. There's lots of good information, books and YouTube, um, TED Talks, etc. out there. Matt Walker being a very good uh, uh, and inspirational speaker on it. Um, but uh, it, it turns out that when we're asleep, the, all sorts of processes happen that don't happen uh, when we're awake. The glymphatic system is sort of the, the housekeepers of the brain, the, the, the street sweepers, if you will, that when we're down for the count overnight, uh, all sorts of things like uh, the buildup, the detritus of our uh, metabolic processes in the brain over the day, those get to get swept out and you get to start fresh. It's like the day after Mardi Gras on the streets, you know, it's like you don't want to, you know, at four in the morning it looks horrible, but then a day or two later uh, after uh, people have gotten to work, things look good and clean and you can move on with life again. And uh, sleep is... Um, is a restorative process and most most people really do need to aim for that seven to nine hours of sleep a night uh, you know I, I'm guilty especially particularly going through uh, my years of training for to become a medical doctor where you push yourself and you get four to six hours of sleep for days in a row and then you catch up with 10 or 12 hours on the weekend it turns out that that's not as that's not a healthy regimen you're trying to go to sleep at the same time on average wake up at the same time on average seven days a week getting those seven to nine hours of restorative sleep in. So you go through all the various uh, stages of sleep. Um, and uh, there, there are all sorts of studies that even with, even after a, a day or two of, of not getting great sleep, you see your immune function not do as well, your response to vaccines aren't as, aren't as strong, your, uh, your uh, sugars in the morning, uh, e even for people who are non-diabetic, but including those who are uh, struggling with diabetes, your sugars aren't as good the next morning, so sleep is key. Wow, and then one of the things that many raw foodists claim is that I need less sleep as a raw foodist mm -hmm. or when I'm eating healthier. So what are your thoughts on this, Dr. Jeff? And also, too, sometimes people like, if you're eating so much, you're so wired at night, it's hard to sleep. So what would you tell them as uh, well? Interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I would say we're going to be coming back to this, but the, it's, a, it's a whole package. And so for someone who's eaten a really healthy uh, plant-based diet, a really healthy raw diet, that's great. That's in a really important part of the of the package. But um, I have not. I've seen a whole lot of people. I've learned from a whole lot of um, uh, very smart people that uh, have excellent diets, and I haven't found anyone who's eating healthy enough to not sleep. And um, you know, uh, you can go to an excellent um, fasting clinic like here in town at True North, where they can very carefully and medically uh, uh, smartly uh, fast you for up to 40 days. 
you can't live 40 days without sleep. You can live a whole lot less uh, shorter uh, without getting your sleep in. So it's it's key for people who are feeling really wired and amped. Um, I would look at you know increased energy from a good diet is good, but if you're um, if you can't go to bed because you can't turn can't turn your thought processes off, um, then I'd be looking into other things like oh, how's your mental health? How you know are you doing some meditation? Are you able to um, to shut down at night so you can get the rest that you need? Yeah, I found personally that when I ate like more fruits and had a more fruit centric di diet, I'd be more wired at night. Maybe that's because all the sugar in natural sugar in the fruits, right? Yeah. Maybe it just kept my brain going because, hey, <coughs> your brain runs on sugars, right, after all. And so when I started eating more heat processed foods, you know, it allowed me to better sleep at night because I got tired earlier, actually. <laughs> and then was able to sleep a lot better, actually. So that's just my personal experience. All right, so we learned how sleep is super critical and super important for your health. It's free and easy to do. Just go to bed early, set your times. I encourage you guys to have like a super dark room. I got like blackout curtains and put like a black electrical tape over any kind of LEDs. <laughs> really nice and have a nice, you know, quiet uh, area to sleep in. Also, the other thing I use is a weighted blanket that's helped me sleep so much better. And then also have a bed cooling pad. So I drop my, the temperature on my bed down to like 60, eight degrees at night that I'm sleeping on. So that really helps me like go to sleep a lot faster. Cause in nature, if we lived in nature, right? At, in the daytime, it's warm and at night it cools down. And that's one of the signals. And there's many aside from the light, getting bright light in the morning is also a very important thing to do. Uh, but yeah, we cool down at night and we were able to sleep better. All right, Dr. Jeff. So what is the next pillar of health? Well, let's see, we can uh, focus on many of them, but let's just move on to uh, chronic stress and stress management. Uh, I, you don't need to hear from me that there's lots of stress out there that we're all facing. Um, busy schedules, uh, concerns about our health, um, making ends meet financially, uh, the future of this planet. Um, you know, there's all sorts of uh, things that could keep us up and we're constantly being bombarded. Um, through our news feeds, through our, um, you know, emails. Um, it's not just that you see the paper on Sundays once a week and you hear the news, right? We're getting, we're getting bombarded all throughout the day. Um, and stress is a major component of our life. And uh, you have just so many folks who are struggling with anxiety and with depression, um, uh, let alone uh, just, uh, just the day-to-day -day stresses uh, that are somewhat more manageable. And so, um, you know, I feel uh, sometimes when even if I'm eating the best diet and I'm getting some sleep, if there's if there are crazy work deadlines or if I'm getting if I'm in the wrong work environment, et cetera, that that's just going to affect our health. And we feel it, you know, we, we've said it since we were a kid, you know, oh, my, you know, my tummy hurts because of the stress. And there's a clear gut brain access, a clear um, uh, mind body connection that I think now most people recognize. Um, and uh, the cascade of various hormones, you know, from cortisol to um, uh, just how, all the various gut hormones th that are affected by your stress. So, um, so with my folks that I'm talking with, my patients, clients, etc., um, what uh, what are we doing to deal with our stress? Our, is meditation uh, or yoga or or something else that gets you mindful in the moment? turn off the screens, get away from the latest uh, updates, and, and be present. Uh, for some of us, that's getting outside um, and the benefits of nature um, uh, and how they calm. I mean, there's certainly several studies that show uh, the calming benefits of uh, being outside, hearing the wind through the leaves, hearing the rain, getting your feet in the soil, all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, whatever works for you, I'm a, I'll be a fan of that will uh, reduce your stress um, and get you, uh, uh, get all of us uh, in a better state of mind. Mm. Yeah, I mean, stress is important. And how I've learned to deal with it is basically, is number one is be less reactive. So many people are just ready to just blow off the handle on the littlest thing and all that, once again, is stress. So like, Really, when things come at you, whether it's news or your ex in your face or whoever it is, right, you could choose how to react, right? You could choose to be reactive and then create stress in your body based on other people's actions or news you hear. Or you could be, you know, you, you could choose not to react and just like let it just drop off you and just 
you know, be like a monk or something. I don't know. So like, I really like try to retrain my brain and, and how to ask myself different questions. So like, Hey, when I hear some really terrible news, right? I could either get stressed about it. Like, Oh my gosh, I don't have enough money in my bank, which is the news I heard. Well, like, Hey, how I, I think about like, how can this benefit me? How could I, how could I benefit from not having enough money in the bank? Well, it benefits me by knowing that I don't have enough money in the bank. I better get off my butt and make more money or I mean, whatever it is. Like you always want to try to turn things into a positive so that it doesn't like weigh on you. The other thing is I always try to like find reasonable answers to deal with situations. If it is in my direct influence, if I mean, there's things that are out of my influence, like I can't change the health of the planet. I can't change the people's diets of the planet, but I can do a little bit to change mine and make good content like this to hopefully encourage you guys to make changes in your life as well. So realize that you can't change the world, but just try to do what you can in your life to minimize your stress as much as possible. To me also getting out in nature and working in my garden and being engrossed in the moment and doing something I love and enjoy, you know, helps to alleviate some of my stress in life as well. All right, Dr. Jeff, so what's the next pillar of health? I think we're gonna get to community. Yeah, sure. I mean, and actually coming over to your house, man, is great community connection time, man, when we get to just chat and powwow and talk a lot about a lot of cool common interests and stuff we have in common. So I appreciate that to, to help me get my community so I can be healthier. Well, I feel the same way and it's definitely uh, benefits me as well. I think uh, one of the cool things about uh, gardening is uh, gardeners have gardening friends they get together and they share uh, not only stories and laughter but uh, also uh, you know jujubes and apples you know <laughs> um, so that's really that's really great uh, so can, we are we are experiencing a, a loneliness you know epidemic uh, the amount of people who are um, with suicidal thoughts um, and just being even if not to that point uh, of just being lonely and and we think, oh, okay, I'm going to spend some more time on Facebook. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this and s increase the number of friends and stuff. That, that actually that doesn't work and, and sometimes is uh, quite counterproductive. And so we need real, we need touch. We need real um, um, community to where we are seeing eye to eye, um, listening, sharing, um, not only the most beautiful picture of my most perfect, you know, uh, plum, but also telling them about how I lost, you know, uh, you know, half of my plum yield due to whatever disease this year. So the, showing the good and the bad, all that's community because um, uh, it's real. And um, with gardening, uh, there, I'm a big fan of uh, community gardens um, where you go, you learn from the pros while you're getting a workout, getting vitamin D, and then you go home with a couple of heads of cabbage. And so it's, uh, it's what I would call habit stacking, where you have all these healthy habits all happening at the same time. Um, and, and I'd say a lot of these things, you notice uh, Western modern medicine kind of has a pill for it, right? So we've got a pill for sleep and we've got a pill for anxiety and a pill for depression. All of them have side effects that tend to be unpleasant or unhealthy and sometimes life-threatening um, uh, we don't we don't have a pill for for community um, and uh, and I hope and we and we never will and even if we do there'd be more bad side effects associated with it right so I'd say get out potluck bring some of your you know if you're a raw foodist bring some of your just delicious vibrantly colored and flavorful food to a group of friends that aren't raw and um, you'll get to share your passion, talk about some topics, and then they get to benefit from a your from some of your amazing food. Um, but uh, we are we are social animals, and unfortunately, uh, uh, social media is not kept up with our needs as social animals. Uh, we just got to get outside and be with other people. Yeah. So actually, this weekend I went to a veg fest here in town. While I was in town, actually, Jeff spoke spoke later in the day that I wasn't there for. Um, but yeah, get out to different events. You know, I'll see various events. I mean, I'll go to the farmer's markets on weekends. I could talk to people. I was actually in a local health food store, community market here, and like several people came up to me because they knew me. <laughs> and we just started talking, so we got some good connection. I saw my ex-girlfriend's good friend in the farmer's market. So we talked and got some good connection time, right? So make yourself more available. Don't just stay at home on your butt, right? <laughs> we talked about that already. Watching YouTube or Netflix. Get out there, you know, join a meetup group in your area, find hikers in your local area, find runners, find 
you know, if you're in a sewing, find a sewing group and go to the sewing group every month, right? Find vegetarians or vegans or raw vegans in your area and go out to meetups, right? Go to different retreats to meet other people to create lifetime connections, right? We need to stay connected in our society that is so disconnected from people. And more importantly, put your phone down. My phone stays in my pocket most of the day and is in airplane mode and I'm, you can't reach me my phone <laughs> and I'm not constantly looking at social media because I'm just leading my life. I'm usually just gardening, playing catch up with everything. I have growing, trimming and planting new crops and also all my food prep that I do and making videos for you guys. So get some connection in, time, in every day when you can. I mean, at least minimally call somebody on the phone, but I definitely prefer in person because there's nothing like in person and definitely during the pandemic, I think that messed a lot of, us, a lot of people up and limiting people's access to other people. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with all, all of those, the wisdom that John's sharing with us. And, and uh, one other thing that I'd like to mention about it is that uh, a, we've learned from research that loneliness can be perhaps as bad for our health as a, as a, about a 15 cigarette a day smoking habit. Oh. So if, if uh, most of us would, uh, would recognize the health um, um, the health challenges faced by someone smoking a, uh, almost a pack of cigarettes a day, um, then we got to focus on uh, uh, on how equally it affects our uh, loneliness affects our health. So, Dr. Jeff, what's the next pillar of health that's important that you know I strive to do every single day in my life, and hopefully you guys do also? So, the sixth pillar, uh, the one that we haven't talked about yet, is trying to minimize or avoid toxic substances in our lives, and so the one that is uh, maybe on the tip of our tongue because we were just talking about it was tobacco use. Um, uh, there's uh, no one in, in America at this point who hasn't heard that uh, smoking is bad for you, chewing tobacco, etc., is bad for you. And um, so th there's various ways that you can quit. And if you need help, reach out to your healthcare provider. Lots of great counseling, even medication support, uh, group support, etc., for that. Um, another one that I think about, of course, is alcohol use. And uh, there's been a lot of mixed messaging about the either health benefits or not of alcohol. It seems like almost all the studies, when you really look at them in a very clear way, that if you're drinking, um, it's it's not benefiting your health um, uh, for almost everybody. Uh, the negative side effects, and I'm thinking particularly for women, breast cancer risk, uh, but then also heavier drinkers having risking uh, risk with. Uh, uh, liver disease, cirrhosis, and subsequent cancer, etc. Esophageal cancer, various other cancers associated with it. It's a mutagen. It's a. It's something that affects our um, our DNA. And uh, uh, the. I think one of the aspects that could be beneficial from um, having a glass of wine uh, with your friends at you know at night with dinner. Um, there are some uh, uh, beneficial food compounds in there that you can like resveratrol that you can find in, in grapes uh, and in uh, fresh squeezed grape juice from your garden that you don't need the alcoholic component for. But, the, but part of the uh, health benefit is just being around and, and sharing with others in community. And I think that, that we've already spoken about that and how that can happen uh, without uh, drinking a, a bottle of wine. And so uh, my, my, my recommendation to my pa patients is if you don't drink, don't start. If you do drink, try to, to drink minimally. Uh, if you're interested in quitting, um, we have some uh, tips on that as well. But it's not just the substances of smoking and drinking um, that uh, we focus on. I also think about uh, uh, trying to choose organic, uh, if at all possible, when you can afford it, if not exclusively. Um, growing your own stuff so that you can be in complete control of what you add um, to your foods, uh, to the soil, and to the, the fruits and vegetables themselves. Um, and then all sorts of things like uh, the toxic uh, uh, breakdown products, uh, these forever chemicals, the plastic breakdown products, the flame retardant products. Um, that is difficult. That is difficult because so many of these things are just in the, vi in the environment. But, uh, what, uh, you know, trying to live as cleanly as possible um, is, is key to our health and planetary health. Yeah, and there's like so many other toxins that I don't know that if lifestyle medicine get, gets into, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna ask you about it. Mm -hmm. So like EMF radiation, mm -hmm. cell phone radiation, like for example, at your head, where I know there are studies in Europe, you know, correlating, you know, brain tumors with more cell phone use radiation, which is a stressor on the body. 
um, personal, you know, hair care and body products, mm -hmm. with toothpaste and just even washing your clothes and, you know, all these toxic chemicals of regular detergents that you could buy that have really strong perfumes and fragrances. I mean, there's like radon that could be coming up from the ground. I have a radon tester. I mean, there's so many different toxins. So like somebody could get crazy and just not even touch paper receipts from the grocery store because it has BPA, which potentially could be a, another toxin. We could talk about do toxins include when you like fry food and there's toxic carcinogens created in the cooking process? Sure. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, so a lot of those other um, areas that you mentioned, I'm not, an, I'm certainly not a expert on. So uh, I would just say learn more about it and see how you feel. Um, uh, but uh, certainly for um, the from the food processing point of view, uh, you know, uh, growing your Peruvian purple uh, potato or or uh, eating a nice healthy potato, really of any kind. Um, is a vastly different um, uh, deal than uh, cutting them up and deep frying them and uh, and the acrylamide associated with that and dousing them with uh, salt and oil, etc. Um, and so, uh, how we prepare food is huge. Of course, um, probably not a lot of people uh, watching the channel today uh, are debating the pros and cons of whether you should stew your meat or uh, or grill it. Um, <laughs> it's certainly not something that I focus on either, as uh, as someone who's uh, exclusively uh, plant based. But um, but there are certainly in animal products on, in how they are prepared, uh, lots of uh, carcinogens. Um, uh, um, abound um, from from not only the source but also the cooking processes. So, cook in healthy ways. Um, uh, I know uh, some folks uh, who do uh, minimally heat or cook some foods prefer steaming over you know putting it on the grill. And uh, I'm sure there's some benefits in that as well. Wonderful. So the message is minimize your toxins and research more if you don't know what what they all are because they are all around us and some of them could are very difficult to be avoided. Right, so do the best you can and don't freak out, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to say. So, can and, and uh, to your point, John, about uh, researching, we mentioned uh, buying organic when you can. I think the Environmental Working Group is a good source for saying, "Hey, let's check out their dirty do dirty dozen, which are the uh, foods that have the consistently highest amounts of pesticides associated with them." And I think they re I think they give a new list every year or two. Yes, they do. And then they have their Clean 15, which is the 15 uh, 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 produce items that tend to have the least amount of chemicals. So if uh, budget's tight this month, I'm going to be buying um, uh, conventional um, from the Clean 15, for example. So that's another great uh, uh, source out there for folks. But also, too, to me, it's about like minimizing your toxins. So for sure, even strawberries might be at the top of the list on like pesticide residue containing foods. It's still a whole heck of a lot less than buying some factory raised, you know, animals that are then slaughtered and killed and they're eating GMO corn and soy, which I'm sure are a lot higher, which they don't rate on the list. Would you I'd agree. agree with that, Dr. Jeff? I agree. So yeah, even, even if it's, even if it's highly sprayed, there are also, you know, processed foods that come in boxes and packages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are still way worse. So we have to remember this in context and not just avoid strawberries because we can't afford or can't find organic sometimes because once again, I like to teach good, better, best. Right. If, you, if, if the votes for uh, conventional strawberries or organic strawberry Pop-Tarts, I know which one I'm recommending. <laughs> all right, Dr. Just, so we covered all the major pillars of lifestyle medicine aside from diet. We didn't really talk about the lifestyle medicine uh, you know thought on diet because my channel is a raw vegan channel but let's talk about the lifestyle medicine and your personal views on the diet and what it should look like according to lifestyle medicine right so lifestyle medicine providers talk about eating a predominantly or exclusively whole food plant-based diet um, and so when I'm talking to my uh, patients and my family and friends about this I say okay so those big groups that I think about are fruit and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, uh, herbs and spices, mushrooms, nuts and seeds. Um, and those are the big seven groups. And um, I, uh, by and large, uh, see a health benefit from eating all seven of those groups. And uh, particularly, I don't, I don't uh, say, well, if you're going to choose one, choose this. Or if you're going to choose two, choose these two. I say, really try to get um, something from all seven because 
they're they're different um, uh, organisms that are going to offer different uh, phytonutrients, different antioxidants, different fibers um, that are going to feed your gut microbiome in a different way. We have lots of um, uh, research and um, scientific evidence showing the health benefits of whole grains and the, whole, and the health benefits of legumes. And so I'm a fan of it all um, and uh, try to get as balanced of a plant-based diet as possible. So Dr. Jeff, I know some of the people out there watching me are like frugivores and they just eat only fruit because fruit's the number one food and we're frugiv frugivorous animals. That's how our digestive system is set up. Like, but now you're telling us there's seven different kinds of plant foods we should all be eating. What would you say to somebody that's only eating fruit and they've been eating fruit for 10 years, straight fruit diet, maybe fruits with a little vegetables. Why should, and they feel fine. Why should they start including some of these other foods in, in appropriate amounts into right. their diet? Like, are they going to really see a difference? Is it going to help them or, or is it going to hurt them actually because they're really not used to digesting those things and they're going to eat beans and they're going to have the worst gas they ever had in their life because they haven't been eating beans for 10 years. Right. <laughs> I, I, and it's a, it's a good point. And I think these are, um, there's a difference between general recommendations and specific personal recommendations. And my general recommendation is to eat as close to a whole food plant-based diet as possible with lots of variety of uh, plants and eating from all those seven groups. I think that um, if, uh, if someone came to me and said, I'm a frugivore for the last 10 years and I'm completely healthy, I'd say, great, tell me, you know, we'll look at your height, your weight, we'll look at your lab tests, how's your liver, how's your cholesterol, how's your blood pressure, how's your blood sugar control. We'll look at all that together and if everything seems optimum for you and, and you feel very strongly about that, then I'll, then I'll support you on it. Um, there are also folks who might have been frugivores for 10 years and then added a little bit of something A, B, or C and realized, hey, I feel a little bit better. Maybe I've got a little bit better energy. Maybe my microbiome's a little bit better. And so, um, so looking at it at a, at a personal level, um, but trying to keep the big picture in mind. Ah, definitely good, good point. Yeah, so like I started changing, including, you know, I would eat a fruit and vegetable with nuts and seeds with very little, actually, I pretty much excluded mushrooms for many years. And I really didn't eat a whole lot of grains, maybe a random grain or seed here and there, maybe a few beans. But now I could say, Dr. Jeff, after including more of those in my diet, I feel more, I feel more balanced and not quite as airy <laughs> from eating maybe all the fruit. And actually, I prefer to eat even some heat processed vegetables and other, you know, beans and whatnot in my diet now. And I feel personally better at this point, but also too, you know, when you're younger, I believe you're more resilient. And as you get more, more mature in your age, you know, you really need to kind of pay attention a little stronger and more to you doing. I know a lot of people that are younger do, are doing a really high, maybe fruit-based diet and, and you're really not gonna see the effects until later because you feel great on it. And that's why I encourage you guys to, you know, find a provider, medical doctor, whether it's Dr. Jeff or somebody else, to get regular blood tests and, and you know, follow you on your specific journey to make sure that all, although you feel great, all your blood markers and everything else, they, they test there and be in the medical system, you know, it, it is in range and, and, you're, and you're gonna be doing it right so that in the long run, you're not gonna hurt yourself. All right, Dr. Jeff, so these are the main pillars, but I know there's maybe a few other pillars that you like to also include that are also good for maybe extra credit if people want to go the extra distance and ensure they're, you know, going to have all these pillars met. Right on. So the American College of Lifestyle Medicine teaches those big six that we've talked about already. But the good folks at the Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute throw on uh, uh, three others that I think uh, are great for extra credit. And that's uh, mo most of which we've sort of been uh, mentioning here and there. But one is t uh, time and nature. Um, and uh, we, you know, we, you, we know our blood pressure goes down, our pulse goes down, our uh, natural killer cell activity, our immune function goes up as we are you know, surrounded by trees getting outside in nature. Um, the, the second of three that I'll mention is uh, just finding joy because um, you, know, you don't want to spend all day fretting about whether you're eating the right kind of lettuce and whether or not you're uh, you should be doing curls today or doing lower body or uh, doing sprints or doing marathons. If you get it dialed in so much that you haven't saved five minutes for a good laugh or, 
or hanging out with your buddies or your family and you know tickling your daughter whatever it is that is uh bringing a smile to your face then then i think we're missing out um even if we're otherwise getting all our boxes checked um and then lastly uh i think a sense of purpose is key and that might tack on you know a handful or more years of of quality life by saying what am i looking forward to waking up to tomorrow and is that uh you know is that spreading the word to uh to the people who are watching this show as john puts out all this great content um and making the, the uh, individual lives a, a better and making the world a better place little by little it, you know is it uh I got to get outside and take care of my, you know, plant babies because they depend on me. Is it watching your grandkid? Whatever it is that gives you that sense of purpose because, you know, I've heard that maybe 30% of Americans get their sense of purpose from their main job. Mm. Um, so good for y'all who are doing that. Um, but for the 70% uh, who are not, um, you find something that, that really gives you a reason to, to wake up and and in, in the blue zones lingo, the, these areas around the world where they have the highest concentration of healthiest, you know, 90, 100 year olds. Um, in Costa Rica, they're talking about the plan de vida. Um, so the plan of life. What do you, what do you, uh, what's the big picture and what are you getting up for? And then um, Ikigai in Okinawan of um, what is, what is your purpose? What is uh, getting you motivated? And so I think those three extra areas are good to pay attention to as well. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree and try to you know, get out to nature in my garden every day. <laughs> and I have a sense of purpose, of course. One of my purposes, of course, is like making videos and content like this to try to make a small difference in the world because I'm not going to change the whole world. But, you know, for those of you guys that are hung around at the end, you know, hopefully you guys have learned a lot from this episode today. So, Dr. Jeff, to sum up everything that we discussed, you want to just mention each point and then maybe like a sentence on how to implement or, you know, on like, so for example eat a whole food plant-based diet and then how, how you know how they could do this and like just summarize it sounds great all right so let's start from the top with what we was just mentioning uh, eating a, a whole food plant-based diet um i think the secret to this and probably all of them is to keep it simple uh, make it fun and then bake it in as my friend uh, dr ben brown says um with uh, with repetition so with food um uh, you know is it uh, buying a whole bunch, doing bulk prep so that you've got food prepared uh, when you're hungry and you can just reach out into the fridge and grab your stuff instead of getting on the phone and uh, ordering some fast food or something like that? So making it simple and having uh, food prepped and try to include as wide of a variety of plants in your diet so you have all this great mix of, uh, of different fibers and that's just something that you can get by, hey, I'm going to try something new this week at the farmer's market. I've never eaten a noni fruit or uh, uh, you know uh, cherry moya or whatever it is um, so that's whole food plant-based number one number two thinking about um, uh, f physical activity or daily movement um, that is uh, where you know I'm gonna park further away I'm gonna take the stairs I'm going to pick a hobby that I can that nudges me to do something a little bit every day maybe I'm gonna get a dog and uh, I'm gonna have to walk that dog once or twice or three times a day depending on where you live and and uh, the dog so that's physical activity. Um, number three, getting uh, quality restorative sleep. Uh, get that sunshine first thing in the morning. Get some physical exercise during the day. Have a set bedtime at night. Wake up at the same time in the morning. Get the screens away. Get the lights uh, out of the room. Get the uh, dogs and cats out of the bed if you can um, and focus on, on that because it's key. Number four, uh, chronic stress. Um, what can you involve in your daily activity and your daily routine to lower the stress that you have and avoid uh, uh, other additional stress by maybe not checking your uh, feed, uh, your social media, your email, etc. as often. Number five, uh, I think we talked about community and uh, what can you do that, that if you if you're not putting it on your on your calendar, it's probably not going to happen, right? So I'm I'm going to go to work no matter what. I'm going to eat no matter what. I'm going to go to the bathroom no matter what. But if I don't put get together with my friends uh, for dinner um, in October, it it might not happen, right? So try to get something uh, regular routine going where people of like mind uh, and interests are getting together, learning and sharing. Uh, the next I think was uh, going to be avoiding or minimizing toxic substances. If you smoke, uh, work with your health care provider to quit. 
if you drink heavily, uh, 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 to cut back as much as possible. If you are um, have, have a choice between a, a sun block that's got 70 ingredients versus one that's got three, probably choose the one that has three ingredients on it. Um, and then those extra credit three, I think those were the main six, and those extra credit three of getting outside into nature, um, walk that dog uh, at the park instead of putting the dog on the treadmill with you inside your house. Um, uh, do something that's fun and that makes you laugh and brings you joy and make sure you've got a, a purpose, something that uh, wakes you up motivated to, to do uh, good in the world. Wonderful, Dr. Jeff. Thanks for summing it up uh, for everybody out there. And any final comments or words of wisdom you'd like to leave with my viewers today after sharing all this amazing information with them? Well, it's all a process, right? And uh, um, to tomorrow, I, I hope I'm a little bit better uh, of a person than I am today. Um, that sometimes that happens, and sometimes it doesn't. But it's a it's a it's a slow process. And just start with something simple, uh, something measurable, something with a, a short time frame to say, "Hey, I've done. I've added a you know a half hour of." Um, of uh, jogging three times a week uh, and I've met my goal and I'm, and I'm feeling better, maybe I'm gonna kick it up 10 more minutes for the week after. And so these short, uh, uh, measurable goals, little by little, making, making ourselves healthier. Wonderful, so Dr. Jeff, if somebody wants to contact you, because are you still doing the online telehealth stuff online in certain you know, uh, states? How can somebody you know, do a consult with you to where you could help guide them personally uh, on this lifestyle medicine and some of the things that you offer as a doctor. Yeah. Uh, so I work with, thank you, John, for asking that. I, I work with an amazing team um, at uh, Love.Life Telehealth, uh, where we can take care of folks in all 50 states. Oh, cool. um, I, uh, I'm currently licensed in California, Texas, and Florida. Um, so personally, I can see you in those states, but um, I would uh, recommend every one of my uh, fellow docs on the team uh, if you uh, want to see someone else or if you live in a state where uh, I don't uh, practice um, and that's love.life um, uh, telehealth you can uh, look up and we can have some links I'm sure in there um, I uh, see a few patients locally if you happen to live in my uh, current t uh, hometown um, and then uh, the probably my most fun uh, thing that I have on online is uh, posting uh, photos from the garden and some health tips along with that and that's uh, at Dr. Jeff Pierce on Instagram. I have a little bit of a presence on Facebook which is Jeffrey M. Pierce MD and that's J-E-F-F-R-E-Y my middle initial M. Pierce MD um, and I've got a website which is uh, jeffpiercemd.com. All right, wonderful, Jeff. Thanks so much. I'll put all the links down below in the description so you guys could check out Dr. Jeff. So, Dr. Jeff, thanks for being on the show today. And I hope you guys really got some value from this episode to learn that, yes, health is important. And it's more than just the diet, which is one component of many different pillars, according to lifestyle medicine on health. Whether you're hearing this information for the first time or not, I want you guys to make some small changes and implement some of these things so that you guys could be on a better road to health and achieve greater health in the long run. And then <laughs> I've achieved my job and my purpose by helping you guys get healthier because that's why I do my videos because I almost lost my life when I was younger and I'm motivated to find the best ways to live for me and more importantly, share with you guys and give you guys access to people that you might not normally meet in your daily lives. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this a big thumbs up. More importantly, share this with other vegans and raw vegans and plant-based enthusiasts, even people that just don't even eat plant-based at all so that they can learn the pillars of health if health is super important to them by using lifestyle medicine uh, you know, to prevent <laughs> instead of treat disease before it happens in many cases. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new and upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days. You never know where I show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 700 episodes at this time on this channel dedicate to teach you guys all about how to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables to improve your health. Put some links down below also to some videos I made at Dr. Jeff's on my gardening channel if you guys want to see his amazing garden here in Northern California. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.